So many of you have requested a video on budget ergonomic chairs. Well, here we are. I reached out to multiple furniture and chair companies to ask if they could send chairs for this video, and I was able to source four chairs in total. We'll go over their features and explain what we like and don't like for each of them. Also, keep in mind that chairs in this video cost between 280 and 535 US dollars. That might not be your definition of budget, but even if it's not, I would invite you to keep on watching to see what features actually matter if you go with a different model than the ones in this video. And now you might ask, why is this guy saying we all the time? Well, for this comparison, there will be three judges. First in line is me. Now you might ask why I'd be a good candidate to review chairs. Well, I've tried my fair share of chairs over the years, working at various tech companies, and I've also tried many chairs at home, including this one. I have a pretty weak back overall, especially in the upper region, and it hurts easily if I'm not using a proper chair. So my back will tell me if a chair passes the comfort test. Next judge is my girlfriend. You might already know her from some of my older videos as my girlfriend. Now, what makes her a great judge is the fact that she's quite shorter than me. I'm 5'11 and she's 5'3, so she'll represent shorter folks out there and see if chairs are sometimes too large. Also, she happens to have lower back pain, so if we sum our back pain, we actually cover a full back. Finally, our most important judge is Mr. Fluffball here. Mr. Fluffball keeps to himself most of the time, but he's quite precious and will only sit on the most comfortable chairs, so he'll be there to help us make our final decision. So we'll cover each chair individually, starting from the cheapest to the most expensive, and at the end, we'll give our verdict on the pros and cons of every chair, and which ones we'd recommend given their price. In order, that'll be the Branch Furniture Ergonomic Chair, the Laura Davidson Bowery, the Steelcase Series 1, and finally, the Steelcase Series 2. Alright, let's go. Whoa, whoa, wait a sec. Did you know that less than 5% of you are subscribed to this channel? That's crazy. This video took a while to make, so please consider subscribing, and while you're at it, might as well follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Alright, back to the video. So, we'll start with the ergonomic chair by Branch Furniture. It comes in the smallest box out of the bunch, and the chair requires a bit of assembly. I started with the base where I added all five wheels, I then added the gas cylinder in the middle hole, after that I secured the backrest to the seat mechanism assembly, and I was able to add the frame of the chair on the base. For the seat, you need to install the arms on each side with one screw each, you gotta make sure they're not locking though as it would prevent adjusting the arms sideways. Finally, it was just a matter of securing the seat to the frame by sliding it into place. So this chair retails for approximately 280 US dollars, and in terms of configuration, the only aspect you can change is the color, where you can get three options for the seat and two for the frame. Here with me is the all black variant. It's also worth noting that this chair comes with a seven year warranty, which is quite surprising given its price. Now, although this chair is the most affordable out of the bunch, it packs a lot of features. First, the base is actually made from aluminum with a polished finish. It's the only chair today that has an aluminum base, others are plastic, so that's quite impressive. Although to be honest, it's mostly an aesthetic feature as I don't believe one can truly break a regular plastic base. The back of the chair is made from a mesh material, so that's great to keep you cool all day long. If we look at the adjustments, the knob at the left lets you lock the tilt mechanism, then the one at the right adjusts the height of the chair. There is a handle at the right to adjust the depth of the seat, although the operation is fully manual and it's easier to adjust while not sitting on the chair. The back tilt tension is adjustable, but the control is under the chair and pretty hard to access without flipping the chair on its side. The armrests are also adjustable in width and height. There are levers on both sides of the chair to unlock the armrests so that they can move sideways. And then just under the pads at the front, there are buttons that let you adjust the height while pressed. The pads can also move forward and backward with a bit of force and there are steps where they lock in. Finally, there is a plastic piece at the back that acts as lumbar support. This one is adjustable in height as well. I was highly impressed by the overall value of this chair for the price. Not only you get a chrome base, but you also get all the adjustments I would expect on a professional ergonomic chair. When you tilt back, the seat tilts a bit at the same time to ease the movement, and the fact that the depth of the seat is adjustable is also a great thing to see. 
The chair itself is relatively light at around 35 pounds, making it great if you want to move it around. Now, it does seem like a pretty awesome chair for the price, but here are downsides we have noted while using it. The biggest problem with this chair for us was the lumbar support. Both my girlfriend and I found it too pronounced and too stiff for long-term sitting. After a few days, we both felt lower back pain because of it and wanted to sit in a different chair. It seems like it's too hard compared to the rest of the mesh packing, which is quite flexible. Removing the lumbar support is one suggestion in the user guide if you find discomfort, and it's quite easy to do so, so it did help a lot in my case and made the chair more comfortable. However, I'm not convinced that it will provide enough support in the long term with only the mesh. Another downside is the armrest, which I personally found a bit too hard for my taste. When your elbow's bones are laying on that surface for a while, it does get a bit uncomfortable. Let's say if I compare it against other higher-end chairs that have plastic armrests, but with a much softer finish. I also wish it was possible to get the armrests a little closer to me. Even at the narrowest setting, my arms are not alongside my body. Finally, this is a small detail, but the wheels don't roll super well. I believe that's because they're made for both carpet and hard floors, but still. I still believe this chair is very impressive for the money, and the cons we've noticed might not apply to you, as most of them are related to specific adjustments that didn't feel great based on our preference. At least, it is possible to remove the lumbar support, which did help in our case. If your budget is limited to chairs under $300, I believe this is a much better option than any other gaming chair out there. Next chair is the Bari from Laura Davidson, and this one came in a larger box than the branch. This one had better padding all around with thicker foam pieces between parts, so I laid out all the parts and then started the assembly. Again, starting with the base and wheels, I then added the gas cylinder. After that, you need to add the seat on you to attach the back upside down as it's quite heavy otherwise. And here, the parts that assemble together are metal, so that's nice. The armrests are also attached to the seat using three long screws each, and then you can put the seat on the base and you're good to go. So first thing I want to highlight is that this chair is a replica of a mid-range chair by Herman Miller, more specifically the Sail. So the design is quite unique, but yeah, it's a copy. It retails for 335 US dollars and you get a total of 8 color combinations, but I went with the boring black on black colorway. In terms of warranty, this one comes with a 2 year warranty, which happens to be the shortest coverage out of all 4 chairs in this video. Now, if we look closer, it features a more standard plastic base. Again, nothing wrong with that, and I believe the wheels are exactly the same as the branch ergonomic chair. And the seat base with all the adjustments is actually from the same brand as the branch chair, so I don't know if only these seat bases or the whole chairs themselves come from the same factory. Fun fact, I believe the autonomous Ergo Chair 2 also has a Donati seat base, so we can probably expect a similar level of quality in terms of adjustments and movements between these brands. Speaking of adjustments, the left side handle will lock the backrest in place, and you can lock it at different positions too if you want, although I feel like that's a bit weird. And then the handle at the right is kind of multi-purpose, there's a knob that slides out and lets you adjust the tension of the backrest, then there's a paddle to adjust the depth of the seat, and another one for the height of the seat. As for the armrests, they can only be adjusted in height, no width or depth adjustments like the branch chair has, and as for the backrest, there is no adjustable lumbar support of some sort. So both my girlfriend and I thought this chair was quite comfortable out of the box. The lumbar support was not hurting our lower back, although it was not super pronounced either. The way they did the backrest is interesting as it flexes a bit, so it's sort of a rubbery material and it molds to the shape of your back a bit and does allow for a bit of movement during the day. But in terms of downsides, the major ones is the armrest, as they provide very little adjustment and they also have a pretty hard surface like the ones on the branch chair. They're also a bit too wide for my likings. Other than that, I feel like the lumbar support might not be enough in the long term. It is comfortable, but it doesn't provide a lot of support given that it's as flexible as the rest of the back. Finally, the wheels are also not the smoothest and require a bit of force to move around on a hard floor. So for around $50 more than the branch chair, I feel like you are getting a more comfortable chair out of the box. However, the warranty is only 2 years instead of 7 and the armrests are not as adjustable as the branch chair. 
So we've looked at two chairs now, and there are two others that are super nice coming up that you don't want to miss. But first, let's hear a word from this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's curated specifically for learning, always ad-free, and they're consistently launching new premium classes, so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's also less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Skillshare has classes on a variety of topics, including web development, film and video, and productivity. I took MKBHD's class called YouTube Success, you know, always trying to get better at what I do. It was super interesting to see the behind the scenes of one of the inspirations for my very own channel. One tip I got from Marquez is the concept of a common thread while scripting, where you try to always go back to one idea or answer a guided question throughout the video, improving its usefulness. Definitely something I will put in practice in my future videos. The first 1000 of my viewers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, so next chair is the Steelcase Series 1, and mine came in a super big box, and that's because the chair was pre-assembled. Looking at other videos on YouTube, it seems like the assembly would be a bit simpler than other chairs I assembled earlier. For those who are not aware, Steelcase is a furniture brand that usually provides chairs, desks, and other types of office furniture for businesses, so their products are high quality, made to last, and usually more on the expensive side. However, this Series 1 chair is their cheapest ergonomic chair, I believe, as it starts at around $400. It is more configurable than previous chairs, and the one I went with has the hard floor wheels and the 4-way adjustable arms, and this configuration brought the price up to $419. You can actually pick the color of the backrest, seat fabric, and frame, and you can also get this chair in a stool configuration. You get quite a bit of options here. In my case, I went with a simple all-black configuration. Now if we look a little closer, this chair has a plastic base, the wheels are super smooth and I believe they're the same as the ones that came with my steelcase gesture. They're really nice. Overall, I think the chair looks really good, I like its simple design and how the back connects to the seat. The back structure is composed of flexible plastic strips and then there is a mesh material on top. This material has sort of a 3D texture and it's quite comfortable while still offering good airflow. Steelcase offers a lifetime warranty on their chairs, including this one, which is better than any fixed year coverage, and I think that tells a lot about the confidence they have in their product. It's also worth noting that this chair is made in USA. I wasn't expecting that given the price. Now, under the seat, there is a single adjustment handle. The paddle will control the height of the seat, and then there is a knob at the very end with three positions. This chair has a weight-based tension system, which means that the pack's tension depends on the weight on the seat itself, which is pretty cool. Makes things a little more automatic. But you still get two tension settings. So first knob position is the standard tension, which would be better for folks with smaller builds. And then the second position is for larger individuals that need a little boost in terms of pack tension. Finally, the last position locks the backrest in place, only when resting straight however, not at an angle like the other chairs did. There is a second handle under the seat that lets you adjust the seat depth and it glides well. Now as for the armrests, I have the 4-way adjustable ones and not only they move up and down, they can also move from side to side, front to back and they can rotate too, so that's pretty cool. Finally, at the back, there is a lumbar support section and it's adjustable in height for proper lower back support. Now, to what I think of it, I think it is my favorite. It's the first chair that I tried that I thought could work for my problematic back in the long terms. Just by the looks of it, I wasn't sure because it looks super small, but it is very comfortable and goes just high enough for proper support for my back. My lower back also feels well supported and I feel like the tension is just right for me, especially when using the boost setting. I can easily recline when I want to, but the chair keeps me straight when I'm focused. Another great feature of this chair is that the armrests are not too stiff. My gesture is better, but these do the job, and I like that I can bring them a little closer to me. I would definitely recommend the 4-way armrest upgrade since it's only $5 and allows a lot more armrest movements. Finally, it's really compact and lightweight, so I think folks with cramped spaces would like its form factor. My girlfriend did like this chair too, but preferred the Series 2, which we'll talk about in a second. 
Now, in terms of downsides, I think the biggest with this one is how the armrests are attached to the back. Since they're fixed to the back instead of the base, they move quite a bit when you recline, which sort of makes it harder to continue working while doing so. They might be in the way if, as an example, the armrests live just under your work surface and you try to lay back. It's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something that the other chairs in this video did better. But I would still pick these armrests over the ones from previous chairs, given that they're more comfortable. Other than that, the chair doesn't let you lock the backrest at an angle, if that's something you want. I personally never lock my chair, so it's not a feature that I'm missing. Okay, now to the last chair of this comparison video, the Steelcase Series 2. So like the Series 1, mine came in an identical box and it was pre-assembled. Again, you would get it unassembled, but the assembly is fairly simple. So this chair is a bit more expensive than the Series 1 and that's mainly because of the back and armrests, as the base and seat are identical, but more on that later. This chair starts at $459, but my exact configuration would be $572 as of today, I believe. The options I picked that made the price higher are the peacock seat fabric and the seagull frame color. So if you don't mind about the exact colors, you could bring it down to 535 instead with the same ergonomic configuration. As for the ergonomic options I picked, I went with the four-way adjustable arms, which are a $59 upgrade and the hard floor wheels for a $17 extra. One upgrade that I didn't pick is the 3D Micronet back, which adds a fabric on top of the plastic back, plus a plastic lumbar support and option, and I think I would pick this option if I were to start over, but again, more on that later. I think this chair looks incredibly good. Colors are preference, but I love this color combo, and knowing how good it looks, I would probably have tried something similar with the Series 1. The back is made from a plastic material and the way it is molded allows for some flex, with sections needing a bit more support using a thicker plastic structure, such as the lumbar area. It's pretty cool and quite comfortable overall for a plastic back. The other main difference with the Series 1 being the armrests, these are quite better, being attached to the seat instead of the back, so they stay parallel to the work surface and barely move when reclining. They also use the same surface material as my gesture, making them super comfortable to rest your elbows on. So in terms of adjustments, this chair offers the same seat adjustments as the Series 1 and works in the same way. One handle for seat adjustment, back tension and tilt lock, and one handle for the seat depth. Where things change is the armrest. They have the same adjustments, but they have a greater range of movements, and you can really have them super close to your body, which I personally prefer. They also move front to back, up and down, and they can rotate. Finally, the version I have has no adjustments on the back itself, but the version with 3D Micronet can come with a height adjustable lumbar support, which I would personally get for an extra $15. So to what I think about this chair, I think it's great. To me, the best feature is the armrests. They have the level of adjustment that I expect and the surface they use is super comfortable. The fact that they stay straight even as the back tilts is also great to feel connected to what you're doing, even while taking a little back break. The level of adjustment is very similar to the Series 1, especially in the seat area, so same comments apply. The weight-based tension feels great and with the boost setting, I feel like it is just right for my body to make sure I stay straight when I want to and can recline too. Another great aspect is I think it looks super nice, but again, that's personal preference. My girlfriend also really likes this chair and she finds it the most comfortable out of the bunch. She felt like the backrest provides enough support for her and she also really liked the armrests. In terms of downsides, for me it would be the lack of a dedicated lumbar support with my exact configuration. I feel like I would need that extra lumbar support. The Series 1 has it by default, but with this one it's an extra $15 for the extra 3D knit, where you can then add the lumbar support. I would recommend getting that option, but again, my girlfriend prefers this back over all other chairs, so maybe you'll like it as is too. One thing too is that with all the options, I'm not sure if it still belongs to the budget ergonomic chair category. So yeah, it's a great chair, but it's maybe not budget. And finally, like the Series 1, you cannot lock the back at an angle if that's something you care about. So in conclusion, which one's the best? I feel like our preference goes in line with the price of the chairs, so we seem to prefer more expensive chairs. 
At the end of the day, I believe the decision should be made depending on the budget that you have and the features you're looking for. I mean, all of those chairs are pretty good for the price they're selling at. And each jump in price equates to a jump in the value that you get in my view. The branch chair is a good starting point, with pretty much all the adjustments you would want in an ergonomic chair, including seat depth, three-way armrest movements, and a tilt lock plus an overall decent quality. The main downside we found was the lumbar support, which was too stiff, but again, it can be removed easily if you don't like it either, and the armrests are also a bit too hard. Then the Laura Davidson Bari is a slight upgrade with a flexible back that was more comfortable out of the box, and an easier to reach back tension adjustment knob. What you're missing though is, in terms of armrest adjustments, as they only move up and down, these are also very hard, and there is no adjustable lumbar support. Next up is the Steelcase Series 1, and when you sit in this chair, you really feel the expertise of this company in terms of comfort and ergonomics. This is the one that I would truly recommend if you can spare the extra cash, as it has pretty much everything I am looking for. You get adjustable armrests, seat depth, and tilt tension. The biggest downside is how the armrests are attached to the back, so they're not the most comfortable when laying back, but other than that, it's a really comfortable chair, and I don't mind using this one instead of my gesture, even for long sessions. And finally, the Steelcase Series 2, where you get everything the one had, plus better armrests that stay parallel with your work surface, with even softer pads, super comfortable. For this one, I would recommend the Micronet back plus lumbar support, as I personally prefer the stock Series 1 back between the two. Still, a nice chair with considerable upgrades compared to the Series 1, but it does start to become expensive. But now you might ask, what about Mr. Fluffball? Well, he only accepted to sit in one of the chairs, and that was the Steelcase Series 2, so I guess that's the one he's voting for. Alright, so that wraps it up for today. I'll link to all four chairs if you're interested down below. This video took a while to make, so make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.